Welcome golf fans, pursuers of knowledge and the almighty dollar. This is your golf guru bringing you the 2021 Masters. This is my value plays. I'm not calling them sleepers because we have a short field and uh, we're just looking for the guys that can uh, round out our roster and get us to the weekend. Maybe get us a top 25 and I'm going to go over ownership projections. I'm going to go over my fades, weather, anything that you need to know before the lock. I thank you for stopping by, and of course, at the end, I am going to uh, spin the wheel live so we can see who wins the two $100 Millie Maker contest entries. So let's get into this. All right, real quick weather. Um, nothing crazy. Uh, I mean, you guys are getting enough weather reports if you're watching the Golf Channel and the coverage of the Masters. Really why I'm showing this is if you are going to be playing Showdown or just trying to you know check in on to see what the weather is going to be like. Of course, leveragewindfinder.com, it is free, and you're going to want to go ahead and pull up Augusta Daniel Field. This is literally two miles, a mile from the course. This is where all the uh, PGA pros fly their private jets, and it is the most accurate weather that you're going to get. Um, right now, everything looks good for Thursday. At one time, they were talking about some rain, but it looks like we're going to be okay for Thursday. Uh, wind might get up a little bit in the afternoon, but nothing crazy. Looks like Friday now, we'll have a little rain in the morning. And uh, maybe the wind's going to pick up again in the afternoon, so that could cause some issues. Really, the worst uh, wind and uh, that I think we're going to see, and it's going to be during, is uh, the Saturday round. So um, we'll see how that plays out. And then Sunday actually looks really good. Again, the wind's going to be kicking a little bit. But, of course, I'm recording this Wednesday around noon Eastern. So just check it out, and I just wanted to show you where you can go to get the most accurate weather forecast, especially for if you're playing Showdown. Okay, let's jump into the picks and uh, the analysis, and then we'll get into everything else. Okay, so what we're looking at is Fantasy National. I've already went through everybody that is 7,000 and below and pulled out my 11 favorites from a value play perspective, and then I'm going to pick my top five. I'll show those after this, and let's get into this. So the first guy that I like, of course, Victor Perez, who, uh, of course, made it to the Final Four um, of the WGC. And has had some good history just showing you, you know, he had a ninth at the players. He had a fourth at a WGC event back in 2019. And there was something else. Oh, and a 22nd at the PGA. Um, just all real quality fields, all, you know, tough courses. And um, so, you know, something that we can leverage from there. I think the guy from a short game perspective uh, could definitely be very live. I don't know if he's, he has played the Masters back in 2020. And uh, looks like he made the cut, and but uh, you know from a total shot gain uh, was about 1.9. And I don't think he's actually played any other courses that. Uh, well, he did play the Arnold Palmer this year. Had a 68. Let's see the Houston. No, and not the CJ Cup. Okay, but he's one of my uh, guys that I like. He gains on bent grass, and um, you know shows with the wind blows he might struggle a little bit. But a guy good in good form. Good price and someone that you might want to look at uh, and from an ownership projection right now. looks like around 3%. Okay, the next person I want to talk about is Corey Connors. Of course, been in great recent form. He ticks all the boxes that I like. Um, you can see his ownership is pretty high, so he's going to be a little chalky. But I understand because he's been putting well and the guy's going to get his opportunities. And he's someone that you know that's going to get you, you know, fairway to green and should make the cut. He's played the Masters three times previous. I believe one was as an amateur uh, in 2015. If we pull that up. And he, uh, of course, made the cut in 2019 and recently had a 10th. So the key is that he's just been around this track and knows it at least a little, probably more than a lot of these guys that we're going to be talking about. Um, and they're also what I like is that Corey has been showing a lot of life comparative on Bermuda with this putter. So um, if we also look at just real recent, his finishes. So he had a 14th at the Bolero, which he won, which is a pretty decent comp course. A 7th at the Players, a 3rd at Arnie. Um, you know, just solid showings. And so I can see why, you know, people are on him. And I think he's a great value play. You know, Brian Harmon did real well at the WGC Dell match play. Um and also a great putter, you know, very pretty solid from tee to green. You know, he's a lefty. Lefties have done well at this course. You know, it shows that Ben is not his best surface, but overall he's a good putter. Um, you know, he had a third at the Players, an eighth at the Amex, so some good showings. And I do believe, yeah, he's played the Masters twice. 
uh, missed the cut in 2015 and a 44th and 2019, I believe that's what I said. 2018, apologize. Um, let's see the CJ Cup. So he had a 28th, and that's the course that I'm really looking at. Um, I think it's the best uh, comparison. I look at the Houston. 2020 was at Memorial Park, so that's not the one I'm looking at. Look at more of that miscut one. And what do you do at the Valero? Didn't play recently, but not so good at the Valero. Okay. Anyways, though, I like Brian Harmon. Again, a solid play. Uh, lefties tend to do well here, and he's got the game. Of course, Matt Kuchar been showing some life recently. You know, of course, we saw him at WGC match play. Um, you know, ended up third place. Um, mentioned that he's, you know, kind of found his swing a little bit again. And, you know, even at the Valero, he kind of came back and showed again. He had a 12th place there. Not, you know, not the strongest field, um, but the course, I think, is a good course fit. And Kucher, you know, if anybody that has some past history, of course, the Georgia Tech guy played here a ton at Augusta. And you can see he missed a cut in 2020. But other than that, he's at a 12th, a 4th, a 5th, an 8th, a 3rd, um, all the way back to 2010. And I think that might have, I don't know if that was, he had to play here as an amateur, I think. Like I said, I don't know that as a fact, but he's just got a ton of course experience. And if his, you know, swing is back where it is, again, these aren't guys that were looking to, uh, you know, top 15 or, you know, that can win. This is the guys that can round out your roster, allow you to maybe play a Rom and a Rory or, you know, a couple of the more expensive guys, depending on how you're going to build. Um, I'm kind of going two different ways. I'm building uh, starting in the 9,000 range and just trying to have a more kind of consistent, solid build. And then, of course, I'm going with, uh, you know, a few of the higher guys and then maybe a few of the lower guys that I think can make it through a few of these guys that we're talking about. Kevin Kisner, um, you know, an amazing putter, and the guy just, uh, you know, gets around a track. Um, I don't think his pass, let's go look here. I don't think he's had the greatest uh, pass at the Masters. Well, not bad. Um, you know, he missed the cut in 2020, but he's played here five times, so this will be his six. So great course history, and, um, you know, he's had a 21st or 28th. So, again, a guy that uh, can help you round the lineup up, and he's been in good form. And Bent is his, you know, almost getting a half stroke on the field when he typically puts on bent. So his best putting surface. Um, so kids, you know, I think I was kind of even on him on the 2020 thought he'd be a good uh, value play then. And of course missed the cut, but right now his ownership is really low. So someone that you might want to look at to differentiate your lineup. Sebastian Munoz, you know, has been just been solid. Uh, again, the guy is green in all the boxes I want to see the putter is where, you know, it can get, uh, you know, either he's, he's just streaky best way to put it. Either he can get super hot uh, Bent is showing over his lifetime is not his best putting surface, but not a terrible putter. Um, you know, he had a ninth at Valero, which again is a pretty good comp course. I, he has to play it here. Yeah. So he played here in 2020 and had a 19th again, total different conditions and what they're going to be seeing, but at least he has been here once. So it's not kind of the eyes wide open, you know, just totally confused what's going on. Um, let's see the CJ cup. Also at Shadow Creek, he had a ninth place finish. So a lot to like about Sebastian Munoz. Um, like I said, I'll be plugging him in here or there. And like I said, a lot of these guys, you know, of course, sprinkling them in. Uh, Carlos Ortiz, I have an outright bet on. Of course, he won the Vivid Houston Open, which I think is a good comp course. The guy's a solid putter. You know, his approach is where he'll typically, uh, you know, green to red, which, you know, is a thing that we really do need here. But everything else he manages pretty well. So just can he hit the irons a little better than usual? I think this is, he's a rookie. So he's never been, he's never played at the Masters. Um, I don't know of an amateur if he did, um, but it's not coming up. But he missed the cut of the players. But, you know, at concession, WGC Mexico had a 15th. He had a fourth at Waste Management. I mentioned the win at the Houston. Um, you know, a 29th at the Farmers, which, you know, just a little tougher course, Torrey Pines. Um, yeah, the guys got solid. And while we're here, CJ Cup, he had a 48th at Shadow, Shadow Creek. But, you know, again, I like Carlos Ortiz. Um, the only thing that would make me a little leery about him is this is his first time around the track, and it is going to be playing really hard from everything we hear. Uh, and his projected ownership is around 3%. You know, Matt Wallace, we just saw, of course, uh, you know, go down with the last pairing uh, at the Valero. So, you know, in good form. Um, you know, he checks all the boxes here that I like. And, if, and also a decent putter. And like I said, I think we're catching him at a good form. And I think he's played the Masters. I think this will be his third time. 
second time. Well, this will be his third time. He's played her twice. So miscut in 2019. Under the easier conditions, he had a 46. Um, I already mentioned the Valero Texas Open. We know what he did there. Good comp course. Good showing at the Arnold Palmer. Just trying to see if anything else. Memorial. That was uh, tough conditions, tough course. Had a fourth place there. Rocket Mortgage. That's a Detroit Country Club. Um, you know, that was where uh, you had the Matthew Wolf and D um, DeChambeau. Uh, that was kind of, you can bomb it all over the place there and not get in trouble. So, anyways. You know, I like Matt Wallace, good price. I'm guessing his ownership, well, it's still saying below 6% projected, um, but for 6,300, which is kind of funny in my brain. I thought it was 6,400 in DraftKings, but uh, either way, it's right around there. And then last but not least, uh, if you need, if you're going to get a little creative and you're going to put in even maybe, like I said, maybe a Spieth and, you know, a Rom and a JT, whatever, um, you're going to need to go pretty low. And the two guys that I've, I, I've identified that I think can get get you through to the weekend and, you know, get you some points, uh, of course, is Bernard Longer, who did it last year or in 2020. Um, ton, ton of um, Masters history, of course, past winner. If we look, you know, he had a 29th in 2020, again, under, you know, easier conditions. But he also made the cut in 2018, 2019. The guy can play handle this course. Funny enough, it doesn't even show his win on here, but he does have a win at the Masters. Um, he had a fourth in 2004. So, funny enough, uh, in some of his earlier days, he missed cut quite a bit. But, um, you know, the guy is a solid, and it doesn't show his senior. But if you go pull up his uh, tour champions, uh, it's either he wins or he's top 10. Uh, so the guy is just a freak of nature, you know, still in great shape. Um, you know, yeah, like I said, if you're looking for a cheapie, uh, he's someone or Stuart Sink. So, of course, Stuart Sink a little younger, um, you know, ticks my boxes here. You can see approach eighth, seventh green and reg. So it's key. Um, he's played here a ton, too. I th think somewhere around 10 times. We'll wait till it pulls up. But um, let's see the Masters. So he's played here. Yeah, a ton. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, this will be his 13th time. So he missed the cut in 2019. He did not play in 2020. So his recent best finish is a 14th. Of course, he had a third in 2008. Um, but, you know, his game has been pretty solid. If we just go look at, of course, he had the win. I don't know if it was at Safeway right off the bat, right when the season kind of, yeah, so it's Safeway in September. First event uh, coming, starting the, the super season. You know, at a 12th at Sanderson, 4th at Bermuda, which is a little easier track. A 31st a tournament of champions, which that's, you know, out of like, I don't know, 40 some guys. So, uh, you know, you can't, that's not the greatest finish there. But 19 at the Honda showing, and I think his son is on the bag. I saw, so typically for whatever reason, he does pretty good when his son's on the bag. So, again, we're just looking for somebody that can get us through the weekend. Okay, let's go look at ownership projections while I'm right here so I don't forget. Um at the top, and I just, uh, this is again being recorded around 12.30 Eastern time now. Dustin Johnson from the very top guys, you know, DJ, Rory, and Shoffley are your three least owned. And then your heavy hitters will be JT number one, Rom second, and then you got DeChambeau. Uh, I think people are still a little leery about what they saw in 2020. Uh, I'm not really looking at that. I think there was just so many different things going on there with messing around with a longer driver, with all the media hype that he was going through. I think he came in maybe a little overconfident. Um, I think he got humbled a little bit and uh, has maybe a better plan going into this. So I, I, you said my two favorite is DeChambeau and JT. But if you're trying to get different, um, you know, you go with uh, what's Rory coming, you know, um, and Rory is an interesting one because I feel like he doesn't really have any of the pressure he typically puts on himself for this. Uh, I think if he can get out of the first round and shoot somewhere around even par, even maybe one or two under, uh, he could be very live. Um, Morikawa, that's interesting. Um, I think uh, that's due to the putter. Uh, people are very leery of, you know, Jordan Spieth. It, it's hard not to, you know, to be on Jordan Spieth with what his past here is, even when his game was not nowhere near where we think it is now, of course. Um, so I understand that hundred percent. He's also someone that I'm on Terrell Hatton, less than 4%. You know, he's just, I don't know if he's ever made a cut here and uh, his game is not in great form. So no shocker there. You know, when you're in that, that price range, you've got a lot of different options. 
Webb Simpson, that's kind of interesting that, you know, 15% uh, projected ownership. I didn't think uh, that many people would be on him. Uh, Webb's never won here. This course doesn't really fit Webb. And it's, you know, great short game, but he just hasn't been that elite uh, tee to green and his putter is not where it was. So I'm kind of shocked by that. Daniel Berger, not shocked by that. Fitzpatrick, of course, is 16%. Um, you got Paul Casey, which that's a little interesting that he's almost 21% projected ownership. Uh, just because, again, he missed a cut here uh, in 2019. I'm not sure what he did uh, off the top of my head. For uh, We can go look. Just totally forgot what he did in 2020. I'm guessing it was uh, somewhere top 15th because of people are... So he had a 38. So that is interesting. Hmm. Kind of shocked at that, that ownership number right now. Um, he's been in good form, and uh, he fits the course well. But some about Paul Casey, whenever we think he's going to do really well somewhere, it typically does not work out so well. Um, bah, bah, bah. I'm just trying to see anybody else at a high percent. Max Homa, no shockers, at almost 13%. Corey Connors, of course, who we just talked about, uh, almost at uh, 17 and a half. So he's going to be a little chalky. Siwoo, that's, you know, that can go either way. That could be a... For sure, a miscut or maybe a top 20. Um, Ryan Palmer. See anybody else down here? Matt Wallace, of course. You know, we kind of mentioned that's not a shocker. Let's see from my cheapies, uh, where's Bernhard Longer? 0.4. So there you go. If you put Bernhard in, and Stewart Sink almost 3%. So with the lower guys, uh, you know, I think some people are kind of thinking the same thing that I mentioned. Okay, so let's talk about my fades, and then I will summarize my uh, top five value plays. All right, so I will be fading Morikawa, which you saw. I'm not the only one that's on that. Um, you know, I think the guy is, you know, solid. He said he's got a new uh, shot he's been working on for the past six months because he likes to hit the fade all the time, and there are some holes that you need to be able to hit it straight or at least with some draw. He says he's been working on that, um, but where I'm just terrified is the putter. Uh, like I said, going from, you know, gaining six, seven strokes to losing six, seven strokes. Um, you know, until he shows me a little more consistent with the putter, I think he's going to struggle a little bit here at the Masters. Scotty Scheffler, again, you're going to notice there's a theme here. Uh, guys that are just so new. Uh, of course, Scotty is not coming in with great form. And that doesn't help, uh, you know, I think missed a cut at, at the Valero. No, he didn't miss the cut, but he, he shot like, what, four under the first day and like four over the next day. And then did nothing really on the weekend. So long story short, not great form and doesn't know the course well. Uh, he's going to need a few more rounds here before I'm on him. Rory McIlroy, this hurts. This hurts me. I'm not going to lie. Big Rory fan. Um, but his game right now, I just think is he's still, I think he's almost a little bit, I don't want to say where Jordan was in his lowest, but he's in the, a little bit of finding the confidence and getting back to being Rory. Um, and yeah, so that's the masters is not a place where you're still trying to figure out the swing and gain confidence. You know, I hope, I hope I'm wrong. I hope he goes out and wins this thing, completes the grand slam of, you know, every uh, major event that he would have won. But, uh, I don't, if it happens, I will be totally caught off guard. We'll put it that way. And, uh, DJ. So, you know, again, who knows, you know, these guys are always one swing thought away, one move to where they're like, aha, that's what I needed. That's what I was looking for, and maybe he's ready to go. But everything I've seen from DJ, literally since he's won the Masters, has not been great. But, you know, maybe this this event and this is what he will be get uh, built and excited up for. And uh, last but not least, Victor Hovland, same thing. Amazing tee to green, but even a little bit of that's been off. Um, his short game, you know, it's gotten better, but still not good. And then his putter, again, it's better. But still not, I don't think, uh, for what we're going to be seeing at this course. So those are the guys that I'll be off. Um, and now let's summarize the guys, my top five value plays. So I mentioned already Matthew Wallace, good form. It's got a past history here. Um, you know, I think he can handle himself around here. Again, not looking for a win. Just looking to make, you know, make the cut. Maybe a top 30 would be great for that price tag of 63, 6,400. You got Corey Connors coming in less than 7,000. You know, for that price tag, great value play. You know the guy. He's got a past history here. Again, a few times around the track. And, um, you know, it's going to get you tee to green. It's just what's going to happen with the chipper and the putter. The putter has been better, so let's just hope that stays in form. Carlos Ortiz, it's all about the approach game. He's the only rookie that I'm picking at all. Um, again, looking for him to get through the cut. 
looking for him, you know, again, a top 30 would be awesome for Carlos Ortiz. Kucher, you know, the old dog is, uh, I think, back. He's the uh, kind of your free bingo square that will get you through the weekend. And, uh, you know, again, just a top 30 or better would be amazing. And last but not least, Brian Harmon, who, you know, if he plays his game, uh, could be up there on the leaderboard. What I mean by that is, you know, somewhere a top 15 and above. Um, I think uh, the lefty's done here well. He's played this track before. He's got an amazing short game, and he's steady, you know, fairway to green. So we'll see. We'll see how it shakes out. But uh, that's it. And uh, I put this in just to remind me to make sure that I did the extra spin the wheel. But thanks, everybody, it. for uh, the response. I think I got like 71 uh, responses. So you've got two out of 71. I'm going to do this live. I think this is a good way to do it, um, just so you can actually see if you care. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and spin it. Let's see the two winners for the uh, $100 entry in the Millie Maker. like the noises okay come on all right our first winner is Chris Solomon so congrats to Chris all right let's do one more and Sean M congrats guys I will be uh, requesting your PayPal email and getting that money over to you guys as soon as possible today so you can go ahead and hopefully still get in to that event. If not, of course, spend the money however you would like. That's it. So I'm excited. We are less than 24 hours away. Really not, uh, what, about 15 hours away now from uh, the first tee shot being hit at the Masters. And uh, hopefully the weather holds up. Uh, it's going to be kind of a bummer if somehow the uh, weather does not uh, does not stay cooperative and there's postpones and all that fun stuff. But Cross our fingers. I wish you guys all the best. I hope this helps uh, uh, you guys be successful. And uh, look forward to uh, talking to you guys next week about the RBC Heritage at Harbortown. And uh, again, would love if you like the button, click the like button, and share with anybody else that you think might like it. And subscribe if you've not subscribed. I will keep doing uh, more and more promotions as we go out through the year. And if you have anything, any other further questions that you can think that you want to hit me up on Twitter or on YouTube comments. And again, to the winners, I will be uh, contacting you guys uh, here very quickly and just need to send me your email so I can get that uh, cash all over to you guys. All right. Congratulations. Guys, take care.